Okay, so in this video I'm going to be talking about how to um, produce a file for 3D printing. Um, we're using the Ultimaker, but um, the same applies for lots of different 3D printers. The file type is a stereo lithography file or STL. And we're using Autodesk Inventor here to create the file. Okay, so I've produced a very, very simple part file here. Okay, um, there's a reason why I've produced it a bit like this, I'll talk about it in a second. Okay, but what we've got to do from the part is make the STL file. So, what we do is we go to File at the top here, we go to Export here, and we choose CAD format, CAD being computer aided design. So, we choose CAD format there. Okay, now what I'm going to do is drop my list down and file the one, find the one that says stl.stl, that is a stereo lithography file, and I'm just going to save it, I'll call it part one there so I can find it a bit easier when we go to the, uh, the 3D printing program, Cura. Okay, so if we come across to our other computer, Cura, there is the logo there, the big C for Cura. Okay, I'm going to open this up. Now what you see when you presented with the... Um, uh, the program first of all is you get a sort of a visual depiction of the Ultimaker print area there and this is supposed to represent the sort of machine what it looks like okay so basically if it fits on this area it's probably likely it's going to fit on the machine so what I need to do is import the file in I've exported it as an STL from Autodesk I'm going to import it in now so I go to load model file at the top here and I'm just going to find that part one file there it is and bring it in okay now this is the first thing you need to make your students mindful of when you're working with um, uh, a program is to work accurately with dimensions okay so if I click this uh, part you can see it's absolutely tiny it's probably um, they've made a huge error here and one of the common errors that students often make is they draw using the wrong unit okay so they'll quite often draw in centimeters for example and export it to this and when it comes in, it comes in with the completely wrong unit. So they're, they're working in centimetres or they're working in inches and they're actually typing in the measurements as if they're working in millimetres or they do this vice versa. So you end up with a, with a part that's maybe 10 times too small or 10 times too big or it's 2.54 which is the increment between centimetres and inches or 25.4 if we're going from millimetres to uh, inches. Okay, So you, you commonly find this is a problem. Okay, Now what you can do now it's not what I'd particularly suggest, is you can scale the part. So if I click the part there and we choose this icon here that says scale, it tells me exactly what the size of the part is on the X, Y and Z coordinates, and you can see those are represented by the, the red, green and blue. Okay, So if I change one of these sizes, currently that is only 2.211 millimetres going across. If I change that to what it's supposed to be, what it also does is it proportionally changes the other two measurements as well. Okay, Let's try it again. We're just going to make it a little bit bigger. There we go. We've now got a two centimetre part. But as I say, this is not the way you want students to model. You want them using actual measurements and making sure that they're doing it correct. But if you're making something very, very quick, or if you do need to scale a part for some other reason, then it might be uh, useful to do this. Okay. So the part has gone in. Now, if I 3D printed it like this, okay, it's not too much of a problem because it's printing from the base here. Okay. However, we do have a section here where there's kind of like thin air, there's space there. Now what the 3D printer will do, it can manage that, but it will have to produce support material in here before it gets to that part. It can't print just into the air unless we've got like a curve, for example. I believe the angle is around about 45 degrees. But unless we've got that curve, we can't print in the thin air. And we can print this a lot more economically as well. So to print this more economically, what we need to do is think about rotating the object round to make it more efficient. Okay. So for example, if I rotated this object round on this um, angle, you'll notice I want to rotate it 90 degrees to make sure it's flat to the base. It will automatically drop it down so it's sitting on the base and now I don't have the problems with the overlaps because it will print this section going up like this, it will get to this point and then it will print it up here. Okay. If I printed this upside down for example we've got the same problem again. So if we turn it around here I've got all of this space here which will have to be produced in um, support material. Now up here it will suggest how long it will take to print the product. So this is saying 19 minutes and it also gives me how much material I'm going to be using. Now if I spin this round what should hopefully happen is you'll notice the time has gone down and the amount of material being used is also reduced because I'm now no longer needing the support material. Now what I like to do personally just to be completely safe is on this part where it support, says support type 
I tend to um, choose everywhere to make sure there's support always and I tend to put the object on a raft. Now what the raft is, is a bit like a raft that you float on, it produces a little base slightly bigger than the bottom of the object like this and it prints it on that. Okay, This makes it easier to remove the product from the, uh, the build plate and it also makes it so that sometimes when the um, the first print is uh, the first print layers are being deposited on the the build plate. Sometimes they can curl up a bit at the sides. This can spoil your print. The raft ensures that it sticks a bit closer to the build plate as well. Now we can change lots of um, these um, settings, okay? But we've got the layer height, the shell thickness. If we're going to hollow the product out, the the top thickness, the density of the fill, okay? To be honest, the default settings are normally quite good on the program, but you can play with this if you want, for example, a higher quality build, or an alternatively, you want a quicker build. Okay, So if you want it to be very high quality, you might raise the density and make the layer height very, very small to, sh to show that the layers are very, very thin and you don't see the edges on the print. If I want to speed up the print, I might hollow it out more to reduce the shell thickness. I might make the layer height bigger. I might reduce the fill density down so it's a lighter object. And that will also save uh, material as well. So if I want to do lots of iterations of the same design idea, I might want to do a worse print. If I'm producing a one-off that's going to be part of my major prototype, then I might want to raise these settings up and make them particularly good. Okay? We've got advanced settings here as well. I'm not going to go into that in too much detail today. Okay, but effectively they're the settings I'm going to go for. Now you'll notice with the uh, machine that we've got, which is the Ultimaker, um, I believe you can uh, hardwire these straight to the machine so I could export the, the, the file straight across. We're not hardwired, we work on an SD card, okay, a memory stick. So if I just literally click on my SD there, it is saving the part straight away and it will save it in this G code format from the STL file and it will use the same name. So you can see it's called part one there. Okay, So my SD card is attached here. I've now got the, um, the G code uh, file for part one on the SD card. Now you'll notice here, this has recently been doing uh, a print there for uh, a previous thing, but if we click the button there and we go back to menu, we've got two options, print and material. Material is probably linked to if we want to change the spool, which is on the back, so if we want to go from PLA to ABS or vice versa, or we want to use some of these specialist um, spools such as thermochromic um, pigment in, inserted into the spool or we want to use some of the blended spools that have other materials in we can change them over we're just focusing on the print at the moment so what I'm going to do is stick my SD card into the machine like this okay and click the button there that says print so it reads the card it's going to find all the G code files on there mine should be at the bottom there it is part one okay and all I have to do basically is click this and it will start printing okay now one last thing, okay, the build plate is here, the build plate is made of glass, okay, and sometimes it's quite useful to find, um, to use a, a small amount of the pre 3D printing glue and cover a wide area around the, uh, the build plate as to where it's going to be printing uh, the product, okay. If we do that, it also makes it slightly easier to remove the product because what we can do is take the build plate out by unclipping these little metal clasps at the front like this, slide the bill plate out and then we can run it under hot water. Now the hot water will melt away the glue um, and be used as a solvent to, to wash away the glue like that and we can remove the, um, the object from the bill plate without the need to sort of scrape it or try and mechanically pry it off the, uh, the base. Okay, So that in a nutshell is how we use Autodesk Inventor to create an STL file how we export it into Cura, which is our 3D printing program we're using with the Ultimator, and a little bit of basics about how we can uh, 3D print as well. Okay, cool. Excellent.